Michael, here's an argument that some of my scientific friends would give me who do not believe in God. They would say that the fine-tuning of the universe, for whatever reason, leads to complexity. And complexity, by its very nature, as we understand it, will ultimately lead to life and life to consciousness and mind. Do you agree with that trajectory? I do not. <laughs> nope, I'm very skeptical of that. For the, a very simple historical reason, let's just say that uh, the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs, let's say it was 10 times bigger than that, and it wiped out all life on Earth, and there was no conscious beings anywhere on Earth. Mm -hmm. and, and let's say there were no extraterrestrial intelligences either. Would the universe continue? Would stars continue to burn hydrogen into helium? Would the laws of nature keep? Yes, of course. I mean, the moon would still be there, and all this stuff would still be going on without us. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I don't think anybody would doubt that. But but the argument it would be that because of the very nature of the universe, complexity emerges, even though the second law of, of, of thermodynamics and entropy increases and disorder increases in, in clumps, it's the it's the other way around, and we have more complex small areas grow in complexity. And even if one gets wiped out with an asteroid, there'll be others. Mm -hmm. And in and because of the movement towards complexity, and complexity by its nature moves to life, and then life to consciousness. Someplace that's going to happen. Maybe it's not going to happen here. How many times has that happened on Earth? Right. Once we have an n of one. Right. And let's say. You know, 100,000 years ago, 150,000 years ago, that little bottleneck effect of which all of us came from a single population of maybe only 1,000 individuals out of Africa. Let's say that they, they didn't happen. They were wiped out. Then what? Then we have no conscious hominids now. But life would still go on. There'd still be deer and do uh, not dogs, but uh, life would still go on without consciousness. So what? We're not that special. This is what really bothers me about this argument, is that somehow this N of 1 is so special because it's us. Well, I, I mean, that, that, you know, we're, we're here now, and, and certainly I can understand why we think that way, but it doesn't have to be us. It could be someplace else. But the universe itself yes. is, 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 is of, of a nature where consciousness will emerge one place or another because of the structure of the universe. That's the universe we're in. Okay, maybe. But see, the problem... Well, maybe. That's a big change. Well, okay, so... I. I think the easy step is to get from non-life to life, from inorganic chemistry to organic chemistry to protein chains to self-replicating molecules. And so I think that's the easy step. We'll find life all over teeming. The galaxy will be teeming with bacterial grade life. I think the harder step is to go from that to big brains because there's a trillion contingent steps along the way that you have to get to. There's just too many places for no the wall to happen. Historically, that is the case here in our N of 1. It, you know, we, we're this close to having not have been here. So I think even with, uh, you know, 100 billion galaxies and 100 billion stars in each of the 100 billion galaxies, yes, that's a good indication that there might be life else, intelligent life elsewhere. Still, we just don't know enough. I think, I think here is a good place to say, I don't know, and you don't either. Nobody knows. It's, we don't know enough. The question of alien intelligence is a, is a fascinating one, but the deeper question is, is our universe that in which we live of a nature where it, by some force, moves towards complexity and complexity towards life and life towards consciousness? And, and, and no matter where it occurs, mm -hmm. is that something about a characteristic of our universe? And, some would go much further than that and say that because consciousness is, exists, it, it must feed back and, and have some deep causative factor about the universe itself. These, these are not religious people I'm talking oh, about. Oh, I understand. No, I mean, it's a, it's a legitimate scientific question. The problem is we only have an N of one. Yeah. And it, we just don't know enough to say anything intelligent about it other than it, this could be that, it could be this, it could be that. Um, Okay, so the, 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 personally, I, I want to think that there's some arrow that leads yeah. to us. My historian of science training tells me, you know what? We've always thought we're special, 
And the trajectory of science has been to knock down those pedestals one by one. You know what? You're not special here. You're not special there. You're not the center of the universe. This argument's a little different than that. It's not, it's not saying that we're special. It, it would say that what we have, consciousness, is special. Yeah, I know. And then there may be some other, other embodiments of that or other exemplifications of that. Who knows? Okay, that's, that's fair. That's legit. Again, I just say N of one, I don't know. Uh, maybe, but maybe not. <laughs> I think this would be one of the great implications of finding an, an extraterrestrial intelligence that, that can communicate. It would give us an N of two, and that would be a sign. <laughs>